you ever wondered how it is that many people are confusing when they evangelize other people? Have you ever wondered if you confuse other people when you share your faith? I found that one of the reasons why many people are reluctant to share their faith is because they're not quite sure what a person needs to do to be born again. So they're not quite sure what it is they need to say. Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society and I've got some good news for you. I can help you clear up the confusion. There's basically three ways that people get twisted up when they're trying to share their faith. The condition, the consequence, and the scriptures. Sometimes people will give a vague condition, like receive Christ, or invite Jesus into your heart, or pray some prayer. And sometimes people will give a straight-up wrong condition, like turn from your sins and start following Christ and obey Him until you die. And sometimes people mess up the consequence. Instead of talking about you'll never perish, but you have everlasting life that can never be lost, people will say, well, if you believe in Jesus, you gain a personal relationship with Him. Or if you believe in Jesus, you gain initial salvation, which can later result in final salvation if you persevere to the end of your life. And thirdly, people often confuse the explanation of Scripture. And one way that's often done is by taking verses dealing with sanctification and using them when trying to evangelize someone, using them for justification. For example, many people have turned to a passage like Matthew 16, 24 to 28, where Jesus says, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And they'll say, the way to be born again and the way to make it into Christ's kingdom is to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him your whole life. And if you persevere to the end, you're going to make it. Well, that passage is dealing with eternal rewards, as Matthew 16, 27 makes clear. It's not dealing with gaining everlasting life. People sometimes use a, a passage like Philippians 2, 12, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's actually a sanctification passage, as I've argued in other YouTube videos. The key is that we need to use verses that are actually dealing with regeneration or justification, and then we need to explain them clearly. And so, if you use a passage that is not designed for evangelism, you're going to confuse people. But sometimes people will even confuse the clear verses. Like, they'll take a verse like John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but has everlasting life. And they will then say, believing in Him refers to turning from your sins, committing your life to Christ, and then following Him for the rest of your life. And so they will say, if you do that, then you will gain final salvation, and at that point, at the end of your life, you're never going to perish, and you're going to have everlasting life. But in the meantime, you have to keep on following keep on serving, keep on obeying, keep on turning from your sins, or you end up and you won't win this final salvation. Well, that's extremely confusing. So if you'd like to be clear, just do the opposite of these three things. Instead of messing up the condition, just make it crystal clear. Whoever simply believes in Jesus has everlasting life, and will never perish. It's a done deal with no strings attached. Secondly, don't mess up the consequence. It is everlasting life. It is life that can never be lost. It's the guarantee that the person will never perish. And third, if you use Scripture, which I suggest having at least one verse, not hundreds, not scores, not five or ten, just one or two verses, Make it clear. Cl 
clearly explain John 3.16 or Ephesians 2.8-9. And if you do that, you won't confuse people. You make the issue clear. The issue is that whoever believes in Jesus for everlasting life has that life. They'll never hunger, they'll never thirst, they'll never die, they'll never perish, they'll never be cast out. But they have everlasting life and that life will never cease. That's truly good news. If you like what you heard today, click the like button at the bottom of the page and make sure to subscribe to our site. And remember, Keep grace in focus.